all I wanted was to be accepted by somebody when I was growing up and, and to just to have, you know, a true friend and, and have somebody I knew that cared about me for who I was. Steve Waldrip was bullied for most of his childhood. I was really skinny. God blessed me with a big noggin and a big head, you know, and, and uh, kids would bully me and I, I, I got the name Jughead. I got beat up a lot. I got picked on a lot. At 14, Steve found acceptance when he gave his life to Christ at a summer camp. It gave me a sense of hope that Jesus truly loved me, that he didn't care if I was skinny or I was ugly or he loved me for me. But the bullying intensified and Steve spent more and more time alone. He was struggling to learn the guitar and asked God to help him. I said, God, if you'll teach me to play this guitar, to sing and to write songs, I'll do it for you, for your glory. And guess what? God said, let's do it. Because from that day, playing a guitar, it was like second nature to me. Soon after, a popular kid from school heard Steve playing the guitar. He was so impressed that he invited Steve to play at a party the following weekend. I felt accepted for the first time. Nobody was looking at me like this big-headed, ugly kid anymore. They were looking at me like, wow, we like the way you sing, we like the way you play, and you're part of us now. They were, they were paying attention to me. Steve drank his first beer and smoked his first joint that night. He continued to party with his new friends and then dropped out of high school in 10th grade to sing and play guitar at Honky Tonks. But I could always hear God keep telling me, this is not what you told me you'd do. This is not our deal. But see, the thing is, God didn't kill me. God didn't take that talent away from me. His deep voice caught the attention of a strip club owner who offered him a job as a DJ. Soon, Steve was running the place and several other clubs. At 22, he left music behind, but fell deeper into alcohol and drug abuse. Man, I had all the women I wanted, you know, all the cocaine I wanted, all the whiskey I wanted, all the money I wanted. I, I had everything I wanted. I didn't need God. Steve continued to live and work in the dark underbelly of strip clubs for the next 14 years. Then one night, a friend invited him over. When Steve arrived at the home, a man jumped him and beat him with a metal pipe. I remember seeing a darkness and feeling a loneliness. This loneliness and, and this feeling of, of nothing, no love, no anything. He woke up in a hospital with a doctor standing over him. He said, I'm not a religious man. He said, but I want to tell you this, somebody upstairs was looking out for you. He said, because 78% of the people that take a blow to the head like this don't live to tell about it. Steve learned an ex-girlfriend had set him up. And Steve left the hospital a few days later, set on revenge. I went to the liquor store and got me a fifth of Jack Daniels. I got my nine millimeter and I loaded it heavy because I was intending to kill everybody in that house. But en route to his ex-girlfriend's house, Steve was picked up for DUI and spent the night in jail. God really starts turning up the steam on me. God says, Steve, I love you. This is not the plans I have for your life. Steve's business partners bailed him out the next day and brought him to the club to let him cool off. I'm walking around with my glass of whiskey in my hand. I'm the boss man. I hear God say something to me you never want to hear God say. God says, Steve, it's now or never. I'm tired of playing with you. He fell to his knees in the middle of the club. Security gathered around me because they thought I was dying. They thought, surely, you know, this lifestyle is caught up with him. And I was on my knees saying, God, forgive me. Let me come home. I got up. I pushed everybody away from me. I went into the office of that club. I called the owner and I said, man, I quit. He started laughing. He said, why are you quitting? He said, you need more money. I said, no, man, I quit. And I said, I just gave my life back to Jesus. Steve was able to walk away from the clubs and the drugs, but he still wasn't free. The first place I went when I left there was to the liquor store and got me a bottle of Jack Daniels. And I went home and I prayed and I took a shot of Jack Daniels. I read my Bible and I took a shot. 
and I did that until I passed out. I woke up the next morning and I did the same thing. Steve tried everything he could to stop drinking, including several stints in rehab. He was only 38, but he knew he was dying. One day I was looking in my bathroom mirror and I looked at my eyes and I seen death. I told God, I said, don't let me die. Don't let me die. I'm back doing what you asked me to do. But I can't let go of this whiskey. I can't stop. And I figured it out. I fell on my knees. And I found the key to breaking those chains was I said, God, I cannot do this without you. And God be my witness. There's never another drop of whiskey touched my lips since that day. God immediately released me from that chain. He broke that chain. In 2013, he married Kelly, and today they travel the country, sharing a message of hope and second chances through Steve's music, just as he promised. It kind of gives you chills to know that God will use an old strip club manager, someone that turned against him and never, ever stopped loving him. That's an awesome God. Finally, someone loved for who I was. There's that friend I was looking for.